Hello, Amazon customer service. How may I help you today? Hey, hey, what's up, man? So, so I, I recently purchased a uh, a package not too long ago. I wanted a bag of ten guitar picks, right? So, so that that there mailman came along, right? And he had a big box, man, a big box, man. Like I was wondering, hey, is my guitar picks in there? I open it and I found rather well, there's a little skinny boy in there, man. Sorry, I, can you re repeat that again? I I got a I ordered a bag of guitar picks. Right, but instead of them guitar picks that I ordered, I actually got a uh, a little uh, skinny boy. So you you got a little uh you got a little boy in there? Yeah, yeah. Um, what is it? Um, what, what's what's your name? Robert. Yeah, yeah. His name's Robert. Um, do, do, do you know where you came from, man? I came from Boston. Yeah, he came from Boston, man. I didn't want no a guitar. I didn't want a little boy from Boston. I want a guitar picks, man. I'm sorry, sir. That's a uh... That's a, that's a that's a that's a that's not good. But why are you laughing about this, man? This isn't funny. There was a little boy in that box. Is that you? Damn, their uh, Amazon kiddo was just sending me. I don't like that. That's not cool. I'm sorry. That's not. Uh, all right, just uh, re return them. Um, were there were there holes in the box when you purchased it, sir? When it when it came here, you meant? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. When the box came to your house. Were they covered in holes? No, 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 no. Should should I put holes in the box when you return it? Uh, if you want them to breathe. Yeah. Then I'll yeah I'll just uh you know yeah I'll deliver to you then yeah um no holes. I want to breathe. Shut up. All right. Yeah. I'll see you later. No, 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 please don't, 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 please. Get in that box. Have a good day. Um, hello, Amazon customer service. How may I help you today? Hi, I recently purchased a little boy from your website not too long ago. But but instead of that little boy, I actually got a pack of guitar picks. <laughs> How's it going, dude? How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I was in the kitchen, and uh, I, I opened up the fridge, and uh, so I saw a block of cheddar in there, and and, and I knew it was your cheddar, and uh, so I ate it. <laughs> I ate your cheddar, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, I ate your cheddar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you don't have that cheddar anymore. I, I sunk my teeth into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was succulent. Yeah, it was some succulent cheddar, Joe. Yeah, yeah, I bet you're not happy about that. <laughs> All right, see you, Joe. Direction. If I turn the wheel left and I turn the wheel right Then the car turns that way and I feel pretty tight I honk my horn and my car goes Fuck yeah Driving down the boulevard I grab the shift and I get excited There's two different pedals for fast and faster My car's a beast and I'm its master I recline my seat to relieve the tension I close my eyes and I hear my engine The beautiful sound of my beautiful engine Steals away my full attention <laughs>
just man, I knew once. Real big guy, right? you know, standing somewhere around five feet, 17 inches. Loved him. Name was Biff. Biff loved him some sarsaparilla. Drinking it. Talking about it. Looking at it. I mean, this man could not get his hands on enough sarsaparilla. So it was one day, we were in the cafeteria with our lunch trays, and one of the orderlies just sitting there, sipping some pop to a straw. Now, I'm sitting with Biff, and we're just eating like we do on most days. All of a sudden, I see this glint in his eye. Now, Biff ain't the sort of man he want to be seeing getting any sort of glint going on in one of his eyes. I look where he's looking, and I realize that he's realized that that day orderly got themselves some sassaras or asparilla. And I know in that moment, this ain't going to end well. This man, Biff, he grabs his plastic fork. You only get those when you're on good behavior. And he leaps over the table like a rabid raccoon. Then there was all these slams, and there's all this blood, and this orderly has a handle sticking out his eye. Then I see Biff standing there, holding the jagged edge of a broken bottle up to his neck. And he's smiling, smiling like he finally got enough sass frass or rasparilla to satisfy him. Then he pushes hard, and it's over.
sir. First things first, that's a beautiful daughter you got there. And I want to personally thank you for allowing me to take her out tonight. Because I know that that ain't easy to do. I want you to know that you put your money on the right horse. Because there ain't going to be no funny business tonight, alright? Cross my heart to swear to kill myself. Ain't gonna happen. I just want to have a lovely night with your daughter. I just want to have a lovely night with your daughter. I don't want to. I don't want to think about all that bad stuff. All that nasty stuff. You know what I'm talking about. I ain't interested in that. I don't want to do that. I ain't interested in that. I'm an honest feller. I'm a straight shooter. My intentions for your daughter are pure. They are the purest of intentions. I intend to court her. I intend to get to know her. And one day, and one day, sir, with your blessing, I intend to bust a baby up in there. Yeah, I intend to bust a baby way up in there. Way up in there. Because I'm an honest feller, all right? I do what I mean. I don't pull no tricks. And I don't pull no tricks on my winky, neither. If I get my winky all psyched up for sex, I ain't gonna, at the last second, say, no, nah, no, nah, actually, you get the tarp. Because that ain't fair to my winky, to my winky. See, I'm about commitment, sir. I ain't going to do that act if I ain't committed. And I ain't going to do that act if I ain't busting a baby up in there. Busting a baby up in there. I'm going to bust a baby way up in there. And we're going to get married. And nine months later, that busted baby is going to pop out looking just like me. And then I'm going to be the daddy. Are you ready to shit yourself? Time Tattoo A young tattoo artist named Jumblecorn sat in a tattoo shop. In walked an ill-looking middle-aged man in a bowler hat, carrying a manila folder. His hand was covered in strange rings, one of them having a tiny silver demon with a totem pole of eyeballs lined up along the crack of its ass. The man opened his folder to reveal a design, some kind of hieroglyphic worm or snake intertwined with mystical symbols. Next, he removed his hat, and after that, his wig. I got a job for you, bud. I want this image. See this? Said the man, carefully smoothing his hand from the bridge of his nose, over the top, then down the back of his cleanly shaven head. Put right along here. Later, as Jumblecorn prepped the man's scalp and began to transfer the tattoo, he asked the man what the design meant. It's a combination of mystical symbols that will allow me to see 50 years into the future. 
Jumble Corn was used to the superstitious, delusional horse shit that spewed from his customers' mouths, this was nothing out of the ordinary. So he calmly reached for his transfer paper and continued. The man simultaneously pulled out a container of ink and showed it to Jumble Corn. And when you do it, use this. What is it? The man explained that it was a fluid made from charred oyster genitals mixed with a special oil that used to come with a vibrating toy truck called a smoky shaker. It's safe in your device, don't worry. Handing the vial over, he now stared at the tattooist critically, studying Jumblecorn's face, then Jumblecorn's design samples that hung upon the walls. Yep, I can tell you're the one. He settled back into the proper position, satisfied. Mm Mm-hmm. The right one to do the job. Had some butt plug over at Lethal Injection LA or whatever the fuck it's called, trying to tell me the lines were too thin. Lines too thin. Lying sack of shit, more like it. (laughs) Then he closed his eyes and Jumble Corn continued to do the preliminary tracing. It took two sessions. On the second session, and the second it was completed, the symbol began emitting a wet sound like a baby owl hatching from an egg immersed in a cup of teriyaki sauce. And the man began to wince in pain. Oh, wait, wait, something's wrong. I don't feel right. Ah, I don't feel right. Ah, ah. The tattoo suddenly glowed yellow, and then the top half of the man's head disappeared. <laughs> Jumblecorn stared blankly down at a partial brain stem bleeding into a throat hole. A glistening tongue wiggled and launched droplets of saliva onto the man's spasming arms. The top of the head, its eyes rolling in their sockets, reappeared fifty years later in the same spot, except now inside of Jumblecorn's granddaughter, Bacon Flap's tattoo shop. She screamed, dropped her Iron Wars Jeffermole player, and stumbled through a Stipson Holochat T format accidentally hash-cuckling it 74 times, which is considered a pretty Zabtor thing to do in the post corb era. The End Alright everyone, settle down. We're about to begin filming. We need quiet on set, please. Quiet on set. Jackie! Shut the fuck up! Oh, sorry. Thank you. We'll begin shooting in three, two, one. Do your wrist get sore trying to cut a lime? Does it take you five minutes to slice an orange? Hi, I'm Dan Cleaver, and starting today, your knife problems are gonna be chopped away they say dan how are your apple slices so symmetrical and that's when i show them the super slicer 3000 now what we have got here is an innovative new blade technology that cuts right through the uh, oh uh, hey hey travis what uh what uh what what uh, what what are you doing here, man? I I said I I said I'd get you the money. Oh, I think you know this isn't about the money. This is about Jack. About Jack? Whoa! Listen, listen, Travis. I I didn't mean anything by it, man. I I swear. Oh, really? So when he was just sitting there on his horse, trembling, it didn't occur to you that he might need help? Uh. Why didn't you help him, I, huh? Uh... Why didn't you help Jack off the horse? <laughs> Oh, you think this is funny, <laughs> huh? It's just all a big joke to no, you, is Travis, it? No, you, Travis, you don't understand what you're saying. Oh, but quite the contrary. I understand clearly now. I see you're just a selfish bastard who wouldn't help Jack off a horse. <laughs> yeah, laugh all you want, as it'll be your last. No, Travis, wait!
have reached the voicemail box of... Hey, Tapes. I really, I really hoped you'd answer, but what are you going to do, you know? I was just calling to tell you about my favorite memory or something. Sadie said it's a healthy thing to do once a year or so. Personally, I think I should do this daily or not at all, but <laughs> I'm no psychologist. She actually said to write a letter, but I can't sit through something like that. You know me. Where do people start with these things, you know? Uh, oh, so like, the first day I saw you was actually really funny, because I was just telling Owen about how much I hated this whole metal straws fad. Like, who cares about that when, well, you know what, I don't want to talk your ear off about this again. So like, I'm going off about these tree huggers, and then I see you with two different metal straws, like some goddamn show off. Then you ask me, oh, uh, what was it? You ask me, hey, is this spot taken, or is this seat open, or something of the sort? Now, we both know my mama didn't raise me to be rude to no stranger or nothing, so obviously I let you sit with us, but dang, you sure were a talker, huh? You probably asked me about a hundred different things. I wish I'd paid attention, but I didn't even know your name or nothing. When did we hang out after that? Something around June. We went to the drive-in to see that movie, The Sandlot. You called me your best friend, but truth be told, I wouldn't even say we were friends then. You complained about how you couldn't see clear enough, and how you really wanted to get some contacts or LASIK or something. But I told you the glasses really suited you. You did finally have something in common with me, though. Baseball. Talked about how Ashwood is the best for bats, and how we'd always both been hardcore University of Iowa fans. I couldn't believe I'd done found another Hawks fan. Go Hawks! Heh, <laughs> uh... We're both strapped for cash, but that was the first time we brought around the idea of going to a game. Next week, wasn't my birthday? That weekend or the next, I believe. Uh, we went to the High V Gas to get some grub and drinks. You dragged me outside with our beers and told me this trick that went like, uh... Damn, uh, Oh, I got it. You said you gotta tilt your cup and let the beer pour in hitting the side. That way it foams up less. I thought it was stupid. It's too easy to make a mess or have the beer run down the side of your cup. Now, I wouldn't advise you to not let this boost your ego or nothing, but... I still do this every time I get a cold one. Now, that doesn't mean I was wrong. It makes a mess an awful lot, but I do it because it reminds me of you. I did it earlier today at the Quick Trip, actually. Either way, we sure did save and save for tickets to that game. It wasn't that long, but felt that way, I suppose. Feels like way too short now. Well, anyhow, you know the way my Buick Century liked to act up any time I had a place to be. When we finally got to that game, ooh, man, could that pitcher toss him out quick. He was both our favorite pitcher on the whole team, I'd reckon. I don't know what got him all riled up that day, though. I remember so much about that day. The fact that you had your first Chicago-style hot dog, the beer running down the side of your cup, the sound your glasses made. That ball was going about 95 miles per hour, but the doctor said you would have survived it if your face were bare. Something about reconstruction or something too biomedical for me to understand. You know, the, the bones of it were... You know, something about the shrapnel from your glasses being launched back into your brain and such. You were a proper mess to look at. I didn't think nothing in that moment, but Sadie said people saw me yelling and hollering for doctors and shit saying my best friend needed help. I guess this was a longer voicemail than I was supposed to leave, but I sure as hell miss you. I don't know what else to say. I've been... I've been doing the beer thing. I've been using a metal straw. I've just been missing you is all. I'll see you, though, when it's my time. I'll call you tomorrow.
The end.